Welcome to the 16th season of The Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Our panel includes Neil Riddell of the Altoona Mirror, Mark Brennan of FightOnState.com, Sports Director Casey Kantz of WTAJ Sports, and a special guest analyst each week. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By Fiori True Value on 6th Avenue in Altoona, just ask rental. By the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid healthcare professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South of Altoona, ask for us by name. By JMP Auto, home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. By the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. Hey folks, welcome to our final nitwits of the season. The gang is all here for our 2013 wrap up. You know Neil Riddell, you know Mark Brennan, of course you know Mike Irwin. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you, Casey. It's good to be back. Nice to have you for the final episode of the year. And guys, a second straight winning season. Our head coach Bill O'Brien, eight and four in year one, seven and five this season, a two-year win-loss record or win-loss total of uh, 15 and nine. And with everything considered, very impressive. And that 7-5 and five mark achieved, of course, because of that incredible upset win last weekend in Madison. Penn State ending this year on a high note. How special was that, Neil? Well, I think it was the highlight of the year. I know we'll get into some highs and lows and MVPs and whatnot. But, uh, you know, and really it was the high moment, I think, of the O'Brien tenure so far. Uh, you know, to beat a, a rank 14th, 15th, depending which poll, uh, and just gives them a, a, a lot of, lot of off-season uh, momentum uh, that I think they'll be able to build on. Yeah, I mean, that was their bowl game. You know, I, yeah. I like the way that they framed that, and they went in and played as if it was their bowl game. You, you know, I've said this a couple times, but if you go back to when the sanctions came down, if, if you would have told any fan looking ahead that they were going to be 8-4 and four and then 7-5, and five, I think people would have taken it. Now, sure, people were frustrated after the Indiana loss and the Minnesota loss. I think that's kind of to be expected. But big picture, I think it's kind of uh, incredible what this team has done over the last couple of years, given what it was up against with the sanctions. Yeah, it's very positive to end the year with a win over Wisconsin. It's like top 15 teams in the country, and Penn State struggled through most of the year. I mean... They were up and down. They had their highs and lows mm -hmm. you know, during the year, but they definitely ended on a high note. And that going into the off season with that win and, and be seven and five rather than 500, it's going to help their recruiting. I think the kids are going to be more enthusiastic going through winter workouts and working out. And these, this team deserves a lot of credit. I mean, it was a carryover from last year's team, but these kids stuck together too. They were part of the Paterno and then O'Brien era and stuck with it the whole time and I have to show your hats off to these kids for what they've done. Right and these these are these two groups these last two years these kids all could have left. I mean the, the, the rest of the kids came in you know post sanctions and, and knew what they were getting into and these are the kids who kind of showed lead, a lot of leadership and I think they're really well positioned when you look they have 15 starters back including uh, Hackenberg who's the Big Ten freshman of the year just named. Yeah, guys, one of the names that uh, I feel is going to pop up more than once over the next half hour, Hackenberg will be one of them. Uh, also, Allen Robinson, the now two-time Richter Howard, Big Ten receiver of the year, breaking the single-season catches and receiving yards records in 2013. Uh, he had eight 100-yard games this year, but the million-dollar question now has to be is um, where is, is Allen Robinson going to stay here? Is he going to move on? He said uh, after uh, winning this award this past week, uh, the receiver of the year that uh, he'll discuss with his family over Christmas break and then probably make a decision after that. Mark, uh, what do you uh, ultimately think that Robinson will do? 
I, I don't know just yet, yep. but I will say this. I think everybody thinks this is a lock, and I don't. I mean, if he were a lock to be a first-round pick, yes, I think you go because that's where the guaranteed money is. But if you look at the NFL draft the last few years, you're talking about maybe three guys in the first round uh, tops, at, and that's going to be tough for him to break into. So I think the decision he's going to have to make is do you come back next year think that maybe with Hackenberg even better you could work your way up to being that first round pick or do you gamble and hope that you're able to maybe prove yourself at the combine and be a first round pick you know my gut right now is it's still 50 50 I don't think it's a lock I don't think it's a lock but I I think reading the body language and maybe he got tired of the media and answer the question he wasn't available really the last three weeks uh, on the Big Ten Network he deferred uh, the choice, you know, the other night, I think he could have said, well, I'm, I'm really leaning toward coming back or anything like that. He hasn't really done that. Is his stock going to be a whole lot higher next year than it might be right now? Um, you know, I, I think it's probably, uh, you know, I think he might be leaning to go. But, you know, I, I hope he stays because yeah. uh, he would obviously <laughs> be a big part. But uh, I think they've also proven that, they, you know, Geno Lewis emerged in the last game. So, uh, interesting thing to keep our eye on. Mike, I mean, I'd be surprised if he stays. I, I mean, I mean, he already set all the records at Penn State for career receiving sure. and had 97 catches this year. I mean, it's hard to duplicate that next year to come up with another 97 catches. He's third in the country in, in receptions, I think, first in the Big Ten. And I mean, I think right now the teams are looking at him. I mean, he's an outstanding receiver. So. I think he would, I mean, I don't know the difference in paying a first and second round. It's guaranteed money. That's coming what it comes back down to. And, oh, it's guaranteed yeah. money. Well, coming back and possibly getting hurt and trying to duplicate what he did last year, I, I can't imagine the stock would be any higher next year than what it is right now. So Great. I think people would be buying But he did make a lot of improvement from last year to this year, and if he can make even more improvement to next year, that would even, you know, because there's no doubt. Once you're into the, you saw Justin Brown get fall to the fifth round, then this kid's better than Justin Brown, right. uh, but he's not even on a team. And the good news is he's got a great sounding board in Bill O'Brien. I mean, this guy has a feel for what it takes to be successful in that league, and I think Bill O'Brien's the kind of guy who's going to be honest with him. I don't think he's going to try to, you know, s uh, g give some sort of snow job to get him to come back. I think he'll be honest. Uh, again, it's going to boil down to whether he projects as a first-round pick, and I don't know that he does right now. And pretty remarkable what he's done in basically two years. I mean, and I mean, that's you hate to lose him, and yeah. you know, as a Penn State fan, we want him back. Right. I mean, because he's certainly going to help the team. Whether he is the MVP this year, I know we'll get into that. But uh, yeah, we are. But anyway, okay. No, that's a good segue, Mike. <laughs> I like where you're going. Still more to come, including the good and not so good of 2013. Plus, as Mike said, we'll hand out our MVPs and give some love to the unsung heroes as well. We're just getting started on this season wrap-up edition of the Nitwits. Stay with us. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Drs. Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue in Altoona, just ask rental. I'm Adam Gress from your Penn State Nittany Lions. You're watching the Nitwits. I found Sasquatch. Got a little bit of a haircut after the Wisconsin he did, game. Yes, he did. Good point. Welcome back. This is always a lot easier said than done when you look back at the season that was. But what were the moments that defined this 2013 Penn State football season? The Allen Robinson catch late against Michigan. How about just the sheer excitement, as we already talked about? Uh, of Penn State celebrating on the field at Camp Randall last week. Guys, what will you take away from the 2013 season? I thought the defining moment was the Michigan game. I mean, listen, if they don't win that game, you know, you're looking at you had lost Indiana before that. You're going to probably lose regardless against Ohio State. All of a sudden, if you lose that game, that's a three-game losing streak, and I think things could have spiraled out of control. To me, the fact that they were able to pull that thing out in quadruple overtime, uh, again, Allen Robinson, obviously a great catch there, uh, was the defining kind of moment game of the season. Unbelievable. It certainly was. 
Yeah, I, I, it's hard to argue, but I would put the uh, the signature moment as, as the Wisconsin as far as the achievement and the fact that they put everything together. Even though they beat Michigan, and that was a great moment, I'm not sure looking back this was a great Michigan team. It wasn't. Uh, and Penn State didn't play a complete game in that in that day. I think they did against Wisconsin. I'd argue they don't beat Wisconsin if they don't beat Michigan. Yeah, well, let's let's argue. Let's yeah. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said we could go all night with that. They are, I mean, both very positive uh, uh, events, for, you know, for Penn State football to have, you know, beat Michigan, come back like they did, and then win with Wisconsin. So it's a flip of the coin which one would be a better moment. But I, if I agree. I think the play of the year is, is Robinson catch against Michigan down on the goal line there. Or he, yeah. and I know you guys highlighted yeah. it there, but uh, making that catch and coming. He had a couple catches in that drive, and and it turns out Michigan wasn't all that good. Well, they should have beat maybe Ohio State or at least been there. So it was a big they win. They tried. Well, well, you know, I think that's a good point, Mike, because you look at that last drive against Michigan, it was uh, Hackenberg's receivers that really made great plays, including Felder. But I think in the Wisconsin game, it was Hackenberg that was setting the receivers yeah. up for great plays. And the good, um, we'd all agree, I think outweighed the not so good, but we'll talk about the not so good as well. The yards and points given up in Columbus uh, comes to mind. Uh, the back-to-back -back kickoff returns against Purdue and Nebraska. Some fumble issues middle of the year for the Penn State backfield. Guys, uh, what else? Uh, well, my low mind? moment of the year would be at Indiana. Indiana's I mean, I don't well, think yeah. anybody thought that they were going to go into Columbus and win. I think they figured they'd, you know, and I know the lines became a, an issue late in the year uh, <laughs> with the 24 points, but I think people thought they'd cover, you know, 50 against Ohio State. And, uh but to me, the Indiana game was a low. Yeah, it was the way they lost against Indiana. They were unable to run the ball against the, just an awful rush defense. I thought the game got away from the coaching staff. I thought everything went wrong for that. I don't think they played well. I don't think they coached well. And Indiana ended up not being a very good team. You should never lose by 20. I don't care. Sanctions, no sanctions. You don't lose by 20 to that sort of team. Yep. Well, you know, they definitely laid, egg, laid an egg against Wisconsin, or with Minnesota. Indiana and Minnesota. Yeah. I mean, and then if you look at one play, I thought that Nebraska overtime, missing that kick in overtime was a killer too. I yeah. mean, outside of yeah. those three losses, we could have, you know, flipped around and been 10 and two or nine and three or something like I predicted during the year, but I didn't think they were gonna oh, lay yeah. an egg quite yeah. that badly that what they did. But you know, you never say, Mike, is that they could have just as easily <laughs> lost those overtime oh, games. I know. And it could that's have gone true. They the won other two way. and lost one but overtime. I, I think that's that there's something to be said for the fact that in a lot of those tight games, more often than not, they were pulling them out. Yeah, they got blown out. But the resolve of the team in the tight games, I think, bodes well for the future. You know, even in the uh, Central Florida loss, which most people didn't see coming, turned out to be a really good team. Yeah. And now they're talking about Bortles. Hopefully he, w hopefully <laughs> he will leave. You he won't see him in Iowa. <laughs> he may be the number two quarterback yeah. uh, potentially available, which might help Penn State. But they were entertaining all year, even yeah, in their, most of their losses. Well, you know, you, you look at it, I mean, they played against a lot of good quarterbacks all year. Now, my opinion, in the Wisconsin game was probably the worst quarterback they played against. And I think Penn State lined up well against Wisconsin because of the, the running game. I mean, Penn State can adapt to the running game, or this team could a little better than it could the passing game. Their passing, uh, defensive passing statistics aren't all that great, but I think, you know, it, it was a good opponent for Penn State for the last game. Uh, we talked a little bit about the conference's freshman of the year and receiver of the year, Christian Hackenberg and Allen Robinson. Who were some other individual players that stood out this year to you guys? Well, a bunch of um, them, obviously. Yeah, I, obviously Robinson, I think, would be their uh, offensive MVP. I thought Mike Hell, uh, as he got healthier, if you would ask me for a defensive MVP, mm -hmm. I, I think I would have to go with him. He made a, a key defensive play against Michigan late in the game, and I think as he improved, uh, their defense improved later in the year. I thought Jordan, uh, Jordan uh, Lucas. Lucas, yeah, if I can spit it out, Selfie. was their defensive MVP. Uh, third in tackles, three interceptions, broke up 16 passes, 4.5 tackles for loss, a sack. I mean, this guy did a what little bit of everything study for, for the yeah. show? Well, you know, I, figured, I know how much Mike was going to go against me on this. Yeah, so I figured know, I was going to bring some agree. stats. You I couldn't remember his name, now. but I got all the stats right. <laughs> Mike, have you ever taken a selfie? No, but my defensive player of the year is Glenn Carson. I mean, Glenn Carson, okay. I, I think Mike Hall, and I'm, he's, a, he's a real competitor and he's a tough kid inside. But I still question his speed on the outside being a linebacker being a great linebacker. I think Carson inside played a lot better during the year than, uh, than Hall. So I would pick Glenn Carson as being you know, the best defensive player that they had. I'm really. anxious to see Hall. At, at, uh, hopefully he's at full strength next year because I think oh, he yeah. was struggling most of the year. He was banged up in the Syracuse game. Yeah. And they might yeah. move him inside next year. I don't know what they're, 
you know, their deal will be with him. Real quick, some just a couple unsung heroes: C.J. Olanian, uh, Anthony Zettel, defensive ends. I thought played yeah. really well this year. Who I else? would go with uh, actually Della Valla. He Della, caught yeah. a lot of these punts. I think he gave him some reliability, at least back there. Um, you know, he didn't break a lot of them, but but he gave him stability, at least catching the football, and he made some tackles. Well, he, I'll go with Mike's favorite guy, Ryan Kaiser. He had three interceptions, <laughs> yeah. two of them clenched <laughs> games. But you know, the other thing, the offensive line. Yeah. Gave up three sacks in the last five games. That group yeah. really came together. Late. Yeah, and they ran the ball tough. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, the whole year I've been very disappointed with the return people on, on kickoffs and on punts. So, yeah, they're sure catchers, but if you look at a return yardage, I mean, that's nil. It's probably average eight yards a return, you know, as a punt returner. So, Della Valley can catch the ball, and, and they had the other guy in there, Watson. But on the kickoff Walker, return, Walker, 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 or Walker, yeah. they, they, I mean, the kickoff return, they kept, a couple guys in there all year long, and I think they could have done a better job on special teams than what they did. We got to head to break the offseason just barely a week old, but we've already had some big developments, the postseason conference honors, of course, but also some coaching departures. We'll discuss those and what they mean moving forward next. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center, your hearing aid health care professional. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your cleaning needs. By your rehab choice, Health South of Altoona. Ask for us by name. By JP Auto, home of the $1,000 push, pull, or tow. By Courtesy Motors of Altoona, where courtesy means a great deal. I'm Ty Howe from the Penn State Nittany Lions. And you're watching the Nitwits. All right, thanks, Ty. <laughs> Welcome back. Some pretty surprising news earlier this week. The university announcing the resignation of longtime linebackers coach Ron Vanderlyn, as well as quarterbacks coach Charlie Fisher. Guys, kind of surprised. Did you see this coming at all? No, I, I, was, I was surprised by it. You know, I think when you look at the Vanderlyn situation, uh, I, I have to wonder if maybe part of this is that his kind of style of coaching linebackers isn't quite in the mold of what Butler and O'Brien are trying to do with this aggressive. He's more of a read and react guy. I want to say this though, great guy, did mm -hmm. a great job developing talent. And from everything I've gotten to know about Charlie Fisher over a couple of years, just a class act, a class act. I wish both of these guys all the luck in the world. Definitely. Yeah, you know, it was uh, surprising to me too, particularly with Vanderlyn's track record. But when you look at the, uh, the demographics of the staff, uh, they got a lot of guys that are approaching my age, and you could wow. see uh, going forward that maybe they, they, maybe they want to get younger in terms of recruiting. Uh, I, I was a little surprised, but I think this is part of the new normal with, with you're going to see assistants that are coming and going a little bit more, obviously, than we did in the past. Mike? And when you get to be my age, you're gone for sure, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but, but I, you know, I go back to the Paterno era, and Joe would never recommend anybody leave the program or recommend him for a pro job or another college job. I mean, Joe wanted to hold on to all his assistants. That I mean, ultimately it, proved to be the staff, a well, part of their debt. You know, you, I, I guess the other argument, I mean, you've got a guy like Vanderlyn who's been around a long time and a Charlie Fisher, but it keeps continuity of the coaching staff and the lettermen and, and the fans involved when they retain those coaches. So I don't know, there's probably a happy medium in there somewhere between, you know, loyalty and leaving, you right. know, and, and Vanderlyn has been super for the program. I mean, I think he's been a good recruiter, and if you look back on some of the linebackers oh, yeah. he coached, he did an outstanding job. Unbelievable. Yeah, one, one quick thing. I mean, with, at the end of the Joe Paterno era, they had one coaching change in the last eight years. Yeah. And yeah, I know this is different for that a lot of people, healthy. but that, that, wasn't, that wasn't good. You can't, you can't be like that. You need to have some turnover. We've got to step out one final time. Uh, usually we save this final block of our season wrap up to unveil uh, a pretty big deal, but yeah. uh, anticlimactic. I think we have a first time thing happening in a long time yeah. existence of this show. We'll tell you what that is coming up next. The Nitwits are brought to you by, by the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. I'm Daquan Jones with the Penn State Navy Lions. And you're watching the Nitwits. 
Welcome back. A first time occurrence. No, it's not the unveiling of Neil or Mike's age, but normally <laughs> at this time every year we unveil that one panel member whose week by week pick would ultimately put him into the highest of ranks in the Nitwit <laughs> Hall of Fame. But Neil, this well. year, um, anticlimactic and not so the case. Yeah, it, uh, the the uh, deflated ball. <laughs> feed, <laughs> feed all, Mike's all still us. trying to fill it up. I, I do want to note. <laughs> we always had a ball celebrating at the end of the My, year. <laughs> Mike had a chance to pull the chair into a, a, a tie, and he did not pick Penn State against Wisconsin. And I think Stassi, Conlon, even Lou, Lou would have come in here with a lot of notes, and uh, and they would have picked Wisconsin. You know, Mike, I think I it's a, it's the it. first time ever that I went against Penn State and. I just, you know, the odds were so great at Wisconsin. You, I mean, I'm so happy that they proved me wrong. But I, I, you the, let the chair down. Yeah, I, I the heard they down. played your prediction in the locker room before yeah, the game, and that's what spurred them to the victory. Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't here every week either. I was, I had two balls and only here part time. You weren't so. here a couple of weeks. You were here. <laughs> I, was, I have certainly been a winner, and I've been here every Jordan week. Jordan Lucas is the worst. <laughs> No, Jordan Lucas isn't that yeah, bad. That was for no, Butler. He gets some good coaching. He's going to be okay. <laughs> Guys, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Appreciate Absolutely. it as always. Hey, I want to thank Chris Owens and for UKC sure. yeah. and uh, WTAJ and our Mark turn, turning around has a lot of short Sundays and Definitely. Uh, the Access Channel and everybody. Definitely. For all the great guests this year, Mike, we love you, but we had some great guests too. Oh, I know that. Thanks to you as well for watching. That's all for us. We'll see you next year. Good night. The Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, an independent firm and firm foundation for your financial future. Coldwell Banker, no one will work harder to sell your home. By Doctors Howells and Reed, orthodontics for children and adults. By Pacifico's Bakery, genuine Italian bread and rolls for your tailgating needs. By Fiore True Value on 6th Avenue in Altoona, just ask rental by the Altoona Professional Hearing Aid Center your hearing aid health care professional by Monarch Cleaners for all your cleaning needs by your rehab choice Health South of Altoona ask for us by name by J&P Auto home of the thousand dollar push pull or tow by Courtesy Motors of Altoona where courtesy means a great deal by the Allegro, where fine cuisine is a way of life. By easytouse.com, your Yellow Pages connection in print and online. By fightonstate.com, as close as you get to Penn State football without putting on a helmet. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday. You can also see the Nitwits on altoonamirror.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.